Good morning, family. Welcome to today's Lessons for Life. Today is Thursday, August 13, 2009, and today we're reading 2 Kings chapter 5. And it's a very, very interesting story in this chapter, so um, I really encourage you to read it, uh, see the lessons that you can get from it, because there's many things you can get from this chapter. And, of course, when you read it, you can email us. We'll put it on the blog. Uh, but Bishop has spoken about this chapter. There's quite a few things he had brought up, and I'm going to go over a few of them and then even mention what I want to mention for lessons for life. Uh, but we see here in this chapter about the man by the name of Naaman. And one of the things that we'll see as we read through is um, how Naaman comes to uh, Elisha, really, to, to receive a healing of his illness. And at first, Elijah tells him to do something. He doesn't want to do it because he says, oh, you know, th there were so many other places that I could, you know, have dipped down or whatever. Uh, that would have been better. But you see the men, the people that were with Naaman really encouraged him to just do it. Because if he traveled all this way, he might as well just do what was asked of him to, um, to, to be healed. So one thing you can see is just, we've talked about this before, having the right people around you that will encourage you, that will push you in the right direction. Now, of course, after he um, listens to what Elisha says and then he is healed, then he wants to give Elisha a gift. And Elisha uh, refuses the gift and his servant Gehazi comes really deceitfully behind his back and he um, takes a gift from Naaman. And then you see the result of his being deceitful and his um, disobedience to his mentor that this sickness now attaches to Gehazi. Uh, but what I actually want to share for Lessons for Life, what I, what I uh, read this morning, was really about Elisha and why he actually refused the gift. Um, because you see, and this is one of, the, you know, uh, one of the great lessons that we can get as we read through the scriptures. I mean, throughout the Bible we've read about you know, great men and women of God. Um, but that Elisha really wasn't the one that was supposed to take the gift because he realized that you know, it wasn't Elisha that did this thing. But it was the Lord just using Elisha to do this great work. So by Elisha not re receiving the gift, then Naaman actually, you know, he, he, read, he had said that he realized, he recognized that there's only one God, Lord God, the one that Elisha served, and not this God that he's been serving maybe all his life. And then after Elisha refuses, because, you know, he was still wanting to give Elisha a gift, but it wasn't, it wasn't the man Elisha that healed him, it was God working through Elisha that actually healed Naaman. So even afterwards when I went to give Elisha a gift and Elisha refused, then he said, you know, when, when I go back to my town, to my, where, I, where I'm from, and I have to go in front of my God, I'm really not going to be, I may be doing the action, but I'm not really uh, bowing down to this other God because I know that there's only one true God. So I believe that by Elisha not accepting the gift, then that even cemented it more to Naaman that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the man, Elisha, because then, you know, he might get stuck in thinking it was Elisha that healed him, and you, you, um, it, it really wasn't Elisha. It was just God being able to use Elisha. And like I said, we've seen these people through the Bible, and they've really just been the ones that God's been able to use and um, work through. So this is a lesson I want to share for Lessons for Life uh, about us, that, you know, it's not about what we do physically, what we do on our own, but what we allow God to do through us. And us being open vessels, just being able to be used to our fullest potential by God. So that, this, that's why I said this is one of the great lessons that we can get as we're reading through the scriptures. Because, uh, you know, the, the more receptive we are and the more we realize that it's not by our own, our own strength, but it's really allowing the Lord to use us, then it, it just gives us that more, not just confidence, but um, you just you can accomplish so much more because you, you're taking the weight off your shoulders that, you know, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do this. And you realize that, you know, I have to allow God to work through me and do this. So when you do something, it's not by your own power, but it's by God going, working through you. So you actually kind of, in the way I like to probably think about it, is we're um, front men or we're, we're actually the masks. We're wearing, God, God is wearing the mask of us. And we're actually performing actions. And there's so many different things, you know, personally, so many different things that I, I um, may have on my plate and I might sometimes feel, and I do sometimes uh, feel there's so many different things and overwhelmed. But then I had to step back and realize, you know what, it's not for Samuel to do this, 
It's actually allowing God to work through me to accomplish the different things that I want to have accomplished or to do these different things. So it's not by my own power, but it's by me allowing God to work through me and having that relationship and, and that knowledge really and the acceptance that God is working through me to accomplish um, different things or you know anything I have on my plate. So that just gives you uh, that much more power and that much more ability because remember even from reading the scriptures before, there's nothing to... Um, too hard for the Lord. So there's really nothing too impossible for us if we allow God to work through us and um, have that consciousness. So it really is it, very empowering um, and putting that power in the right perspective. We got to just keep in mind that it's not us doing it because that helps us when there's a lot of things to do and we might feel overwhelmed. We realize it's not us that's doing it. But then you also have to be humble enough when you do accomplish these great things re realize that it wasn't by you too. It wasn't by you. It was by the Lord that actually you allowed to work through you. So your responsibility is to be open to allow the Lord to work through you and to do the uh, different things that you might want to have done personally for yourself. So, like I said, this is one of the great lessons that we see even as we read through and you see even Jesus uh, performing the great miracles that Jesus performed. And there was something we saw about even in uh, service the other day about, um, you know, Jesus, when you see, it says, when you see me, you see the Father. Because the works that he's doing is, you know, the Father working through him even while he was on this earth. So, um, you know, it's, it's, like I said, it's really one of the great lessons that we can get from reading the scripture. So, with that, that is today's Lessons for Life. Create yourself a wonderfully blessed day today, and we'll talk again tomorrow.